What's up everybody, it's AJ with eTrailer.com. Today we're gonna to be checking out the Yakima Deep Space 10. This is gonna be a cargo box that goes on your rails of your roof rack. So we have the bedrock system installed here today. It's gonna to be mounted onto these rails above your bed. And as you can see inside the truck bed, there's still room for stuff in the bed. So you can kind of vertically stack your gear to carry more stuff on your trip. Let's check it out. Right away, it's all about space. That's why you're getting this box to add onto the roof. That way you're creating more cargo inside, self-contained and not just laying in your bed. So looking at the inside of the bed, you can see the totes we have in there. We even have a cooler that's underneath the system with the bedrock on there. We have our ski carriers and snowboards. They're all right here, plenty of room for that. Then let's go and check out our Deep Space 10. Now it's 10 cubic feet of space on the inside, but that's great. That doesn't really help me visualize how much stuff can fit in there. So we have all the stuff I'm gonna try and fit in there that we didn't wanna just leave in the bed of our truck or our gladiator. And it's not gonna fit in here because we need more leg room for all our passengers. So let's see how much of this is gonna fit in the Deep Space 10. Lock it up and we're good. The whole box is made out of a durable ABS plastic. It's also got a textured finish on it. I really like that from some of the other, you know, rooftop style boxes I've messed with mostly. Those are sometimes a glossy finish on them and those are the ones that are easiest to scratch. Like if, as long as it's glossy, it looks great right when you put it on there the first time. But the first time you take it off and set it in your garage, it can hit anything in your garage and add a little scratch to it. I don't like that. I prefer the textured finish like it is right now just because it just even looks and feels more durable than those other ones. And that goes with protecting your gear on the inside too. So I'm gonna open it up and we'll look at the lip here. Just this little extra thing I like that this part completely goes over this. This comes down as a lipped air. So you'll see as it goes over there, it comes down and goes way over. So if it was the rain, the rain would come out here onto this part and drop from there. There's nothing getting up and in there. So the elements should not be getting up in there into your gear at all. And I like that protection, especially when, you know, the stuff you're gonna be putting in here is like these bags and helmets. You don't want them in the back of your truck or your gladiator, cause that's out in the elements. You don't want them to get wet and you didn't have room inside. You wanna put them in this box to keep them dry and good to go when you get to your destination. Something I want to point out is that this looks a lot like the Yakima gear locker that works with the exosystem. It is not the same box. That one has tracks on the bottom that attach to the exosystem. This doesn't have that, so you can't use them interchangeably. Even in the shop, we had some people commenting about how similar it was, and it was the same thing. Just men to make sure that you knew it is not the same thing, and you'll have to get the proper one to go on the exosystem if you want to do that. Another feature it has is a built-in lock. I really like that. They don't all have that. It's really easy to use. Just bring the lid down, turn it, it's locked up. Now, one other thing I like about this lock is when it's in the unlock position, the key doesn't come out. So that's gonna help you not lose that key. That way, you know, you don't lose that and then you can't lock the box and then it's useless because you can't go down the road like that. You just keep it in there when you're loading it, lock it up, then you just put it back on your key ring or wherever you're gonna store it. As sturdy as it is, it does have a weight capacity of 100 pounds. So just keep that in mind. When you're loading all your gear up in there, don't exceed that. Also always keep in mind what you have amount to. Our bedrock bars have a weight capacity of off-road and on-road. Both are far over the 100, so we're just gonna stick with that 100 of the box. That way we know if we don't unload that, we're gonna be just fine. I unloaded it so we can take a closer look on the inside, but some other things I wanna compare it to with the other roof boxes I've messed with is just the way the lid is very sturdy too. You can see I move it back and forth like that. And it does move a little bit, but you don't have to worry about it falling back down on you all the time. I've worked with some cheaper ones that sometimes you have to bring the latch up here and attach it just to prop the lid up yourself. And you have to do that on both sides. That's a huge pain because as you throw gear in here, you can knock one of those arms down and it would fall down. You don't have that problem with these struts in here. They're keeping the lid up there. And even if you let go of it like halfway down, it's not gonna just fall on you. I like that part. It might fall like right about there, but very slowly you can catch it. Cause you know, you're already reaching up trying to throw gear in here and you don't want that problem of it being wobbly on you or feeling like the lid was gonna close at any time. Take a look at the inside a little bit closer. I wanna show you the latch system. You got three latches along the top and they fit into these bases here 
along the bottom of the cargo box. So that's going to be good. So when you close that down, that's what keeps the lid nice and locked up. But something else you saw as I was loading up the box, make sure your cargo doesn't come over these points and cover up those holes. So one of the helmets or one of the bags was just a little bit over here. So I went to go close it. You can see this latch kind of came down. It was kind of blocked. That's why it wouldn't shut. Not a big deal. Just something to look out for when you are loading your gear. Just make sure you try and keep it away from this edge and it should close just fine. Overall, I ended up really liking the box. At first when I was messing with this, I was a little unsure of everything just being not sure why you wouldn't just throw it in the bed of your vehicle. So like in the Gladiator we're using today. But after seeing this whole setup, it makes a lot more sense. The box was really sturdy. It was a good rooftop box. That's what I compared to some of the other ones I've messed with. It didn't have any other problems of the whole lid, like the top coming completely off. You have to set that down into place, which is a pain because you have to kind of hold it and get it right. It wasn't like that. The hinges are really sturdy, so that lid stayed up there like I needed to as I'm loading this up. And then when you take a step back and look, how easy it was to install with no tools and all the extra stuff that you can fit now underneath there and then stack this on top with skis on the side it makes a lot more sense where you can get all this gear with you on your trip and you got the stuff here protected from the elements and the other stuff is in there too plenty of leg room for everybody else on the trip which is going to make everybody happy in the long run well i think that does it thanks for hanging out and i hope this helped